Cool. Um, so I'm Shannon Sass, and I am a data science associate at Luno. And today, my title for my talk is um, From Events to Insights Using Google Analytics 4 at Luno. So Luno is a global cryptocurrency company. And uh, Luna makes it easy and safe to store, buy, and learn about cryptocurrency. And today, I'm going to speak about what's new in Google Analytics 4. I'm going to introduce the, the data model and give a description of our new feature, which we just launched, um, which is called the BTC Savings Wallet. And then I'll just go through um, the process that, that I use to derive insights. And the, the actual flow that I'm going to be focusing on as an example today is the Enable Savings Wallet flow. And then I'll give a demo in GA4 of the final analysis. If you don't know anything about cryptocurrency or Luno, don't worry. Um, I'm just going to use it as an example to show the process that I go through. So to get started, what's new in GA4? Um, so prior to GA4, you would have uh, your Google Analytics account, and that's basically just a folder. So within this folder, you can have different properties. So you have the universal analytics property, and that was a web-only property. So a property is something where your online data gets stored um, to be used for Google Analytics. So for universal analytics, it's the tr traditional one, that most people have been using and know about. And then you also have Google Analytics for Firebase properties. So these are, this is for your app data. So before, there was no easy way to combine your, your web data streams and your app data streams. And this made reporting quite difficult for analysts. So now um, we have Google Analytics for properties. So this has replaced Google Analytics for Firebase, and it is the future uh, of Google Analytics. So you can still have your universal analytics property, but going forward, when you create a new property, by default, it will be Google Analytics 4. And this allows you yeah, to, to have all your, your web and your app data in one place, and you can do rollout report, uh, reporting across platforms really easily. So just to go through some, some highlights, um, this is the new version of Google Analytics, and it was released on the 14th of October, so very recently. They used to call it App Plus Web, which was the beta version. Um, fun fact, <laughs> they renamed it because it was very confusing. Uh, a lot of people thought that you need to have um, an app and a website as a product in order to use the App Plus Web property. But that's not true. You can use Google Analytics 4 whether you have just a website or if you just have an Android app or an iOS app or you have all three. It uses an event-driven data model. So I'll speak a bit about that just now. And this allows for cross-platform reporting and um, everything uses the same event schema now. So if you think about Firebase Analytics, where it's event-based, then now with web, you use the same schema, which allows for the cross-platform reporting. You can also do cross-device reporting. So in Google Analytics 4, you have uh, the cross-device reports for all of your reports, whereas in Universal Analytics, you only had it uh, for some, some reports. And the reason why is because your user IDs that you can send, so on, on each event or with your app when somebody logs in, you can send uh, your own user ID, which identifies your customer. So if they log in on two different devices, then you know that you're looking at the same customer. And you can dedupe that customer. So instead of counting them twice, you count them once. And GA4 now allows you to do this with all of their reports, uh, which is really, really cool because it also combines your, your given user IDs with their own uh, measurements. So for example, they would use something like a device ID. 
So if somebody is not logged in, you can also use the device ID and then fall back on that. The next thing that I'm going to actually be showing you in the demo later is this analysis hub. Um, so this is really awesome because before, in GA um, 360 with Universal Analytics, you had to pay for this. Whereas now with GA4, it comes for free. And it's a really awesome, awesome tool because you can do advanced ana analytics, which you couldn't do before. And the last thing just to mention, um, but I won't go into it in much detail, but it's enhanced measurement on web. So GA4 now also allows you to do enhanced measurement. And this is through the use of GTAG, um, where you can basically automatically track your page views. You can automatically track scrolls on your page and uh, click on links. And this allows them to say, you know, it's less work required from the devs in order to implement these events, which is really cool for the devs. <laughs> so talking about the data model, um, Universal Analytics is uses a session-based model. So what that means is that all of your events that happen get grouped into a session, which occurs over a period of time. So for example, here I've got a search and a play event. And this customer did these events over a certain amount of time. And this gets saved as a session to the model. Whereas with GA4, it's an event-based model. So each event or user interaction with your site or your app gets logged and stored in the data model. So this allows for more flexibility because you're focusing on events rather than sessions. One thing also to note with the Universal Analytics versus GA4 is that Universal Analytics had category, action, label, and value um, parameters. Whereas with uh, GA4, you have key value pairs. So for example, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to log, you know, somebody viewed content on my site, then I would be limited in universal analytics to category, action, label, and value. Whereas in GA4, I can set my own parameters, so my own key value pairs. So for example, I can set the article title, I can set the article ID, um, the content type, and all of those are key value pairs that I can send to GA4. OK, so now I'm going to talk about the BTC Savings Wallet. So BTC Savings Wallet essentially allows customers to earn interest, interest on their Bitcoin. And an essential part of this, of this new feature is the enabling BTC Savings Wallet flow. So this flow allows customers to actually add their BTC Savings Wallet to their account. So just think of this as a wallet that a customer is trying to add um, to their list of accounts that they have with us on our website or on our app. Now, the process that I would go through in order to you know, derive insights from this is product will request a new feature to be added, and in this case, it's the BTC Savings Wallet. Data and product, product will communicate and gain a a deep level of understanding of what we, we want from this product, why are we introducing it, and what we want to achieve. So our different success metrics and how we want to measure these. Then in this case, I'm specifically talking about the, the digital analytics side of things. So there's a lot of, a lot of different questions that could be asked, but I'm focusing specifically on digital analytics. So I would receive the fundamental flows from design. Um, so in this case, the, the BTC savings wallet flow. And then I will define the events to be implemented so that we can answer our key business questions. Once I've defined the events, the devs 
will then implement them across platforms. So in our case, we have a website, we have an Android app, and we've got an iOS app. And then the devs will go and implement these events. And once they're implemented, I can then go and analyze them in GA4. Once I've analyzed them, I will then feed back insight to product. And then depending on the insights that I find, we'll make certain changes um, to the flow in order to optimize it. So that's the, the general process. <laughs> So now from problem to approach. So what are we actually you know, trying to achieve? What's the goal? So my goal is to enable the product team to provide the best customer experience possible. And in order to do so, you know, we need to answer a few key questions. So thinking again specifically on enabling savings wallet. When we look at the actual flow and how customers move through the journey, we want to be able to know, you know, what percentage of our customers actually complete this flow, how quickly do our customers complete it, and where are the pain points? So, you know, are, are customers taking really long in one section and dropping off, or are they moving through it easily and quickly with no troubles? So the best approach um, that I found to, to do this is a funnel analysis. So I found that a funnel analysis is ideal for a fixed flow where you have a set number of steps and the customer has to move through each of these steps in order to actually achieve the key goal, which in this case is enabling their wallet. So adding a wallet to their account. So now I'm just gonna walk you through the designs. So these are the designs that I received and in the first one, we've got our, our wallet. Right, let me just hide that. So in the first one, the customer's looking at their wallet screen. So an, an example of an event here would, would be a screen view. So this is a, specifically an app event. And the, the name of the screen that you can set is Firebase screen. So we've called this the wallet screen. And the next step that the customer would take is to add a wallet. So they would click on that card, and we call that a card click event. And the name of that is add wallet. And we have a product group parameter as well, which is just called wallet, which is useful for grouping our reports or our events. So once a customer clicks on add a wallet, it brings up a bottom sheet. So in this case, the customer can click on you know, any wallet that they want to. They don't have to go and click on BDC Savings Wallet straight away. They could add another wallet that they don't have. So for example, Ethereum. But yeah, what we're interested in is the BTC Savings Wallet. So they select the BTC Savings Wallet to add. We call that a bottom sheet item click event and you can capture any additional parameters that you want. So in this case, we've got an account type, which is savings, a currency type, which is crypto, and then the actual currency of the savings wallet, which is BTC. And then you go, so you click on that, and you go to the first guide screen. So when you've, once you've had that um, bottom sheet item click, you go to the guide screen, and the screen view event will fire. So at this point, you know, customers have shown that they're interested in adding their wallet. So this would be the first step in our funnel because I want to measure how many people, once they've said they're interested, actually go on and complete it. So this is called the Add Wallet Savings Guide 1 screen. And at this point, a customer can click Next or they can swipe to the right or they could click cancel or just exit the app, right? But because a customer can click next or swipe, we're not very interested in the, the button click event here. So we're actually interested in the screens. So the next screen is guide two. So here would be our second step in the funnel. And this basically just tells the customer, you know, how, how can you earn interest? And again, they've got the option to click next, to swipe right, to swipe left, or to exit. So say they go on to the third step. So now this is saving guide three. 
And from here, they can get started. And if they click Get Started, they'll go to the Terms and Conditions screen. So this is one screen. I've just put two separate designs here just to indicate that in order for someone to go onto the end of flow screen, which is the, the next screen, they have to actually check this tick box and then click I agree. So I haven't added the, the check um, event, but what I've got here on the left is a button click event. And I've called it accept T's and C's. So when they click on agree, it would fire off a, a button click event with accept T's and C's. And in this case, the value would be one. If they clicked on cancel, the value would be zero. And if they click on I agree and they've checked the box, then the success parameter would be one. So now we know everything's good. They didn't have any problems. They went straight through. If the success parameter is zero, then it means that they didn't check the box successfully and they didn't go through. And then if it's null, that would only be the case when they click on cancel. Okay, so the customer goes and they check the box and they click I agree. Then they get to the end of flow. So this is the final screen. And at this point, it's a celebration screen. They have added their wallet. So they've successfully completed the key customer journey to add their savings wallet. So now I'm going to just show you demo. Uh, just exit. So I'm going to show you what it looks like in GA4. Um, so this is the new reporting platform. Uh, there's this analysis section here. So under Explore, Analysis, Analysis Hub is what I was referring to earlier. And this is really an awesome feature that they've added. And there's a whole bunch more that you can do besides final analysis. But I'm going to just be focusing on, on final analysis today. So I've created this funnel already. I've added the five steps that I was interested in. So as I mentioned, I wanted to know from the first guide screen to the end of flow. And in order to you know, derive insights from this, let's look into it. So step one, i just hide this to make it better to see. So step one, we've got add wallet savings guide one. And the time period that I've chosen is the past week, so Sunday to Sunday. And we have 20,000, well, 19,200 customers approximately um, entering the first guide screen. So if you hover over here, it says 19K, and that's the number of people that actually went and had that screen view event. So from there, we can look at, okay, well, how many people actually went to the second guide screen? So you can see that 93.3% of customers went from step one to step two, which is the second guide screen. And 6.7% of customers dropped off, so they abandoned. And if you look in this first row, you can see that that's 6.7% represented here, and this 93.7% represented here. So the completion rate, the abandonment rate should give you 100%. And the abandonment rate is what we are, you know, obviously really interested in. Before I get there, though, the first question was, what percentage of our customers actually add their, their wallet? So in this case, you can see that 61% of our customers that started this flow actually completed it. And this is what we want to optimize, right? We want to make it as easy as possible for our customers to move through our flows. So the next thing to look at is the lapse time. So how long does it take to get from the guide one to guide two, from guide two to guide three, et cetera? 
And elapsed time is an average time. So if I have somebody who takes, you know, 24 hours and somebody takes one second, it will take the average of that time. And one way to, to make this more meaningful is to actually go into the settings where you add your steps. And you can say that you want the, the time to be in a certain range. So for example, I don't want people to take more than five minutes to go from guide one to guide two. I think five minutes is more than enough time uh, to move between screens. So if I change all of these between each step to five minutes, and I apply that, then you'll see this time obviously decreases because you've gotten rid of the outliers. Let's just wait for it to load. Cool. So it decreased a lot, right? I mean, it went to seconds from minutes. Um, it's, it's really useful because you can expect, you know, you, your customers are moving through an app. It's not something that should take a long time. And what we can find here that's interesting is the time between add wallet savings terms and conditions screen and the end of flow add savings wallet. So this is 30 seconds, which is almost double between uh, one and what well, is double between one and two. And that shows, you know, maybe maybe customers are actually reading the terms and conditions. I don't know if people do that, but maybe they do, which is great. Um, but it also means, you know, we could spend some time uh, actually summarizing those a bit better and make it easier to read. And then people would spend hopefully less time on that. And then the last thing I wanted to point out was the abandonment rate. So what really stands out is this 27.81%. So at the step, at the terms and conditions screen, we've lost 27.8% of our customers in this flow, um, which essentially means that people, you know, they've gone through guide one, they've gone through guide two, guide three, they get to the terms and conditions screen. And at that point, they've got, a, they've got an interest to, to get to the, the end of flow. So this is something that we can work on and we can improve. And you know, it might it might come down again to the whole terms and conditions. It's a it's a lot of content, especially in app. So that's yeah. <laughs> I just find it funny that people reading the terms and conditions. Um, but yeah, so that's the the flow. And what else can I tell you from here? Um, oh, I wanted to show you the different types that you can do. So I have another one here, which is a trended funnel. I was hoping it would have been loaded already. No. OK, let me just show you here. So you can change the, the visualization. So if I change this from a standard funnel to a trended funnel, You can actually see your funnel over time. So the one disadvantage usually with a funnel is that you can't actually see how it changes easily over time. But here I've got the, the changes over the past week. So if you look from the, the 25th of October, you can see that we had 654 customers completing the flow. And if you look on the 29th, this increased to 2.8K. So maybe it's because, you know, it's a Sunday. If you look at the following Sunday, it's around the same number of people completing the flow. So we would then look at a larger time period and see the trends week on week. And it could also be because people got paid on the 25th and then they decided, you know, they want to, to get some earn some interest and add their wallet. 
Um, where's the settings? So that's the trended funnel. Other things you can do here, just go back to standard, is you can make it an open funnel. So in this in this case, it's it's a um, closed funnel because people can't enter at different steps. So if I make this an open funnel, it shouldn't change anything because you can't actually enter our flow at different steps. So if you look, it's the same um, numbers. Uh, what else can I tell you? There's breakdowns, which you can do. So for example, um, I can add uh, age as a breakdown. And it will break each step into your customer base. So for example, here we've got add wallet savings guide one and 5,245 of these customers are between the ages of 18 and 24. And then you can see the, the breakdown for each of the steps. And yeah, that's funnel analysis in GA4. So thank you very much. Um, any questions?